Hello everyone. So in this lecture, we are going to study about nitrogen cycle. So nitrogen cycle is one of the biogeochemical cycles, which basically means that these are the cycles that are involved in the circulation of the essential elements in the nature. So out of the different biogeochemical cycles that are there, nitrogen cycle is one of them. And that is what we are going to study today. But before that, we need to understand that what is the need of this nitrogen cycle? So the thing is that the plants, they do require nitrogen in abundant amounts for carrying out various physiological and chemical procedures inside their bodies. And in order to do that, this nitrogen is needed, but the problem is this nitrogen is not easily available to the plant bodies. It is available in the inaccessible forms. For example, about 79% of the atmospheric uh, air contains nitrogen. But this nitrogen is not easily accessible to the plants. Therefore, there needs to be some mechanism by which this inaccessible form of nitrogen can be converted into the accessible form so that it is readily available for the plant to be uptaken. And here comes the role of several different bacteria and microbes that help in the fixation of the nitrogen and also in the assimilation of this nitrogen inside the plant body. So before we can actually start to understand this whole cycle, we need to understand that there are five stages of nitrogen cycle. The first stage involves the fixation of the nitrogen and this is carried out by bacteria. The second stage involves nitrification. This is also carried out by bacteria. The third stage is called assimilation, and this happens in the plant. The fourth stage is ammonification, which is carried out by decomposers. And the fifth stage is denitrification, which is carried out by denitrifiers. So we will be discussing about these things one by one in this cycle. So as you can see here in the cycle, that this is the atmospheric nitrogen, and this is not easily accessible by the plants directly. So this needs to be converted into the accessible form as we just discussed. So first, the stage is nitrogen fixation. Now, this nitrogen fixation is carried out by two different types of bacteria. Now, what are these two different types of bacteria? The first type of bacteria are known as the symbiotic nitrogen fixers. Symbiotic nitrogen fixers. Right. Now, what is a symbiotic nitrogen fixer? So this kind of bacteria is a bacteria which is in a mutual relationship with the plant, which means that this bacteria is going to take something back from the plant in return of what it is giving to the plant. So what it is doing, these symbiotic nitrogen fixers, they are converting the atmospheric nitrogen into usable form and it is making it accessible for the plant body. And in return, it is getting something from the plant which is helping in its survival. For example, it is getting the organic acids. So very important example of symbiotic nitrogen fixer involves rhizobium. So rhizobium is present in a close association with the root nodules of leguminous plants. So it helps in the fixation of the nitrogen by converting the atmospheric nitrogen, which is the inaccessible form, into the usable forms. The other types of nitrogen fixers are the non-symbiotic ones, which are known as the free-living. So these are the free-living and non-symbiotic nitrogen fixers. So basically, they are not having any kind of mutual partnership with the plants. They are freely living inside the soil systems but they are helping in the fixation of the nitrogen somehow by converting the nitrogen into the accessible form so that the plant can easily take it up. And the important example of this free living non-symbiotic bacteria includes azotobacter. Right? So azotobacter is the example. Now let's come back to the cycle. This is the nitrogen in the atmosphere. Nitrogen fixation happens by these two different types of uh, nitrogen fixers. Right, and it is converted into a usable form that is ammonia. Right, so in the first stage, atmospheric nitrogen is converted into ammonia. 
The next stage that comes is the nitrification. Now this nitrification happens with the help of the nitrifying bacteria. So these nitrifying bacteria basically convert this ammonia into other types. What are these two other types? So basically, first, this ammonia is converted into nitrite. And then this nitrite is converted into nitrate, as you can see. So the important bacteria that are involved in this specific stage, that is the nitrification, which are known as the nitrifying bacteria. So there is this bacteria called nitrosomonas. Nitroso Monas. So this nitrosomonas is responsible for performing oxidation of ammonia into nitrite, right? And then comes the role of bacteria like nitrobacter. So these kind of bacteria like nitrobacter, they now convert, uh, or you can say that they perform oxidation of this nitrite into nitrate. So this whole thing that we studied till here, this is the second stage, that is nitrification. And this happens by the bacteria called nitrifying bacteria. Now the next stage that comes is assimilation. So now these things that have been converted, these are the accessible forms of nitrogen, which means that the plant can easily take up these forms. So absorption of the nitrogen then takes place by the plants and this process or this phenomena is known as assimilation. So the plants now take up this nitrogen. Now you know that the food chain is there. Uh, there are several animals which are going to feed on these plants. So obviously that nitrogen is going to get inside the animal bodies as well. So that is also a part of assimilation only. So the first stage of assimilation basically includes the taking up of the nitrogen as accessible forms by the plant bodies. And the second stage basically involves when the animals are taking up uh, the nitrogen by feeding onto the plants. Right. Okay. Next stage is the ammonification. Now, this ammonification basically involves decomposition of the dead and decay matter. So, these decomposition, uh, the decomposition of the dead and decay matter happens due to the decomposers, which means that these are going to be the microorganisms which help in degrading the dead matter. They are also known as feeders. They are also known as feeders. So these decomposers, or you can also call them as feeders, they involve several fungi and bacteria. So several fungi and bacteria, they are responsible for decomposing the dead organic matter of the plants and the animals. Now, what does this process lead to? This leads to converting the organic matter back into ammonia, right? So back into the ammonia or ammonium ions, right? Now, when this ammonium ions or the ammonia gets inside the soil, it can again carry, be carried out uh, the process of nitrification by the nitrifying bacteria and the cycle might continue. Right? So this was ammonification. Next step is the denitrification. Now, what is the uh, phenomena of denitrification? So denitrification is basically the process uh, in which the reduction of the nitrates or the nitrites leads to the conversion into the gaseous form of nitrogen back into the atmosphere. So as you can see, these are the nitrates or the nitrites are here. So these are acted upon by a specific class of bacteria called denitrifying bacteria, which converts these nitrogen types back into the gaseous form of nitrogen. And this phenomena is known as denitrification. So there are several different uh, uh, examples of denitrifiers, or you can call it as denitrifying bacteria. So we have important ones, including Clostridium, and we have Pseudomonas, right? So these are the important bacteria which are classified under denitrifiers. So this was the nitrogen cycle. Now on the right-hand side of this diagram, you can see that it is written lightning. Now, what is the role of lightning in the nitrogen cycle? So apart from the involvement of several nitrogen fixing bacteria uh, and the other types of bacteria which help in the fixation, the lightning can also act as a source of nitrogen fixation, right? So lightning 
with thunderstorm that can lead to the conversion of the gaseous nitrogen into some usable forms. So basically it breaks down the atmospheric nitrogen into the nitrogen oxides, which is then utilized by the plants and the assimilation can hence take place easily. So this was about the nitrogen cycle. Thank you so much.